Today I'll be reviewing the best-selling compact SUV in the United States, the Toyota RAV4. Now the RAV4 was slightly upgraded in 2022, but it receives another upgrade in 2023 in the form of infotainment. This infotainment system has been upgraded with a newer interface and bigger screens. So how good is this brand new RAV4? Let me tell you about all the features, how it drives, and more importantly, answer this question. Is this the right compact SUV for you? All right, let's get started. All right, I'm behind the wheel. Let me tell you more about this brand new RAV4 and tell you about how it drives. First of all, let me comment on the exterior looks. This generation debuted back in 2019, so we're about four years in. Toyota did refresh the exterior look last year in 2022, but it's really hard to notice. The grille was changed slightly, different texture, different material, but it's really hard to notice. The headlights did change though. The headlights are different, but again, unless you have a 2022 and a 2021 next to each other, it's really hard to notice. But with the daytime running lights on, they do look pretty cool. So I'll give Toyota that. But overall, the RAV4 still looks pretty much the same as four years ago. Now, this one that I'm driving is XSE, which pays more attention to the exterior. And you can see with this XSE, everything that normally is matte black has been painted. So you see those fender flares or fender guards, they're painted, so that looks good. The roof rail painted, the mirrors are painted, the window surrounds are painted, and it gives this XSC a more premium look. There's no matte black anywhere. Also, this one comes with crossbars on the roof rails, and it has these little side steps. They're unusable for stepping on, but they do add a little cosmetic appearance to the RAV4, so looks a, makes it look a little bit better so with the XSC everything on the outside is painted I like the grill I like the new headlights the overall shape the side profile the back right still very squared off so I still like the exterior look I think this is still a pretty good looking compact SUV now what about the biggest change in 2023 well that's on the inside with this infotainment system the cabin overall has not changed not that I've noticed everything is still the same since four years ago, but this infotainment system is a big upgrade. Toyota finally, finally, after so many years, decided to upgrade their software, their graphical interface, and everything about it is light years better than the previous generation. So on the left side, you see a few menu items for your navigation, music, phone, settings, very easy to understand. And the button layout, the menu items within, big bold not a whole lot to choose from and and that is a good thing so you don't get too overwhelmed by the interface you also do get hotspot capability wireless apple carplay android auto you have your own assistant and it could do ota updates as well so these are all fantastic stuff a big upgrade and the screen gets updated too. So with the upper trim levels like this XSC, you get a 10 plus inch screen and it's bright, responsive, a big upgrade over the old one. And even the lower trims gets upgraded to a nine inch screen from an eight inch screen. So overall, the screen is bigger no matter what you choose and they work better. So this is a significant upgrade on the inside. Now, with this XSE, you also get a digital gauge cluster. Normally, on the lower trim levels, you get like a, a smaller screen, but this one, your whole gauge cluster gets upgraded. Uh, I will say though, it's not as bright as some of the other screens I have tested, but this gets the job done. Now, because this is a hybrid, on one side, you have all this information about your battery, your power, your charge, stuff like that. Another side, it tells you how fast you're going, but of course, you can configure it. You can scroll through various things like your safety system, your trip computer, right? There's a lot of stuff that you could go through. I do like the screen. I just wish it was a little bit brighter, more in your face. Maybe you could adjust that, but also you could see things like your navigation, if you're equipped, and your speed limit, you know, all the good stuff. And with this XSC, you get another screen. 
This one actually comes with a digital rear view mirror. You know, a digital rear view mirror makes a lot of sense, but even inside this RAV4, you get it. I'm impressed with that. And also you have built-in home link buttons, which is nice. I mean, to be honest, this XSE RAV4 hybrid is very, very well equipped. In addition to these three screens, you also have a giant panoramic sunroof on top. You have a wireless charger, heated seats up front and heated steering wheel memory seats, a power lift gate. You have a 360 bird's eye view camera system, although it's very slow, to be honest. It's very slow and really outdated to some of the other systems out there, but you still get it. And when you go into reverse, check out your rear view camera. Very nice. You see a 360 view around your RAV4 and you can adjust the lines to one that you like. You also get drive modes. You get JBL speakers within this RAV4 is pretty loaded, pretty loaded. Now this one I'm driving is a hybrid, the RAV4 Hybrid XSE. And in my opinion, the hybrid is definitely the one to look at versus the non-hybrids. Now there is a separate category, the plug-in hybrids. I'm gonna cover that in another video. And I'm gonna cover the non-hybrids in another video. But the reason why I say hybrids is the one to get is because you get increased fuel efficiency and increased power. Now this RAV4 hybrid is powered by a 2.5 liter engine combined with two electric motors. Now, by the way, all hybrids, all RAV4 hybrids come with all wheel drive. So you don't have to worry about upgrading. That's a big bonus. But in combination, everything together, you're getting about 219 horsepower versus the non-hybrids, which gives you around 203 horsepower. And it's significant because you get a boost in torque as well. So zero to 60 in this RAV4 hybrid comes around 7.4 seconds versus about eight seconds for a normal RAV4. Now eight seconds zero to 60 is not really enjoyable to be honest. 7.4 seconds, not really enjoyable to be honest, but it is slightly better. But like I said, it's not just about power, it's also about fuel efficiency because this hybrid gets 41 miles per gallon in the city, 30 on the highway, overall combined 40 MPGs, 40 MPGs, which is among the highest for this class. And if you compare that to a non-hybrid RAV4, you're getting about 29 combined MPGs so you're talking about a difference of 11 miles per gallon. That's significant. That's really significant. That's why, in my opinion, if you're gonna get RAV4, you get the hybrid because, first of all, you're not paying that much more because you are getting all-wheel drive standard. Also, you're getting more power, which means around town, accelerating, getting up to speed just feels better. And lastly, you're getting tremendously more fuel efficiency. Now this RAV4 is pretty practical because on the inside, it comes with plenty of space. Good for families and good for just hauling people around. Take a look behind the second row in the cargo area, you have a good amount of space, not class leading, but not small either. Especially if you fold down the second row, you could see pretty flat. So you can throw in a bike in there if you wanted to and plenty of luggage. Also, moving to the second row, I'm 5 feet 10 and you could see I still have like three inches behind my driving position, about three inches of headroom. So even if you're a six footer, you can fit back there. Good amount of space. And up front too, same thing. Plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room, plenty of hip room. So even though this is a compact SUV, there's still a good amount of space on the inside. The space is not as big as some of the newer offerings from Kia and Hyundai and even Honda, but overall, I still think this is pretty adequate for families and for just everyday use. Now the seats in here are pretty comfortable. This XSE has some unique blueness inside. So you could see there's a blue stitching on the inside of the seats. Also, the stitching is blue. Adds a little bit of pop, a little bit of sportiness. So I do like that, but more importantly, the seats feel pretty good. So second row up front, the seats are holding me in, not very aggressive. The right amount of cushioning, 
So the seats feel pretty good. The door panels have the soft leather. You know, everywhere that you can feel on the door, the dash has this nice softness to it. You know, there's really no hard plastic other than a little bit on the center console, but for the most part, everywhere else is covered with some softness. And I think Toyota did a good job with that. Now, as for the rest of the drive, the inside cabin is well insulated, but when it's really windy out, you're gonna hear a lot of wind noise. Today is really windy. But normally speaking, I think it's decently quiet. It's not as quiet as some of the others in this class I recently tested, but it's decent. And I have the radio off right now, so obviously most people are gonna be driving with the radio on. So I think sound inhalation is good, but isn't class leading and could be improved. Okay, just had an opportunity to accelerate from about 10 to 60. Actually decent, decent acceleration. I know I was poking fun at the 7.4 seconds, 0 to 60 before, but that was pretty decent. Now, as for ride quality, I did mention about the very comfortable seats, but I, I, I think the suspension is a bit harsher with this XSE. So I do feel more the bumps as I'm going over them. They're not bad. They're not really rattling the whole RAV4, but I could definitely feel them. So the suspension isn't the softest. And around corners, it doesn't, this RAV4 doesn't feel very sporty either. So it could be a combination of the larger tires with a maybe a slightly more aggressive suspension setup. So on-road manners is okay, but not the softest for sure. Now, as for steering, the RAV4 has a nice steering wheel. It isn't the fanciest. It isn't the most modern. It's very basic. The buttons are really easy to understand but overall grip is decent. The leather isn't the softest. It's kind of, again, just good. <laughs> Not the greatest. But as for the steering feel, I'm actually quite surprised because Toyota's usually feel softer. This one has a really good weight to it. For some reason, I mean, it, it just feels like it's really weighted. And for me, I like that. Many people may not like that. It depends on your preference. But for me, the weightedness of the steering is good. And if you look at a steering play, just a little bit, just a little bit, isn't too bad, but the weight kind of makes up for it. Now, are there any negatives to this RAV4? Well, with this hybrid setup, unfortunately, at times you'll hear the gas engine turn on and then off and on and off. For the most part, it'll do its thing. It'll automatically switch on and off as needed. For example, if you want full acceleration, it's gonna turn on. So there's that. There is an EV mode button, so you can select whether or not you want it to be using hybrid or non-hybrid, but really there's no need to control it. You just let it do its thing. But periodically, that could get annoying because sometimes you'll just hear the engine come on and then off and on, especially if you're just like, and stop and go traffic might get a little irritating now besides just the hybrid setup there's not a whole lot for me to nitpick on i already talked about this rav4 really isn't class leading in anything so when it comes to size it's not the biggest in the compact segment when it comes to technology it doesn't have the most features of this segment it's also not the quietest it's also not the quickest it's also not the most comfortable but with all that said, it's hard to find a compact SUV that does almost everything well like this RAV4. There's nothing about this RAV4 that makes me think, well, Toyota screwed up. They really screwed up. No, nothing like that. So that, that is the reason why I think so many people are buying RAV4s. If you look at 2022 sales numbers for the RAV4, it's amazingly good compared to other manufacturers. Most manufacturers actually lost numbers in 2022, but not the RAV4. The RAV4 is by far the best-selling compact SUV in the United States, and it's not even close. Now, as for pricing, there are a ton of trim levels for the RAV4. It also depends on if you're choosing the hybrid or the non-hybrid or the plug-in hybrid. So, 
To go over the hybrid models, you do have the LE, which starts around $32,000 after destination charges. Then you have XLE SE, the brand new Woodland Edition. Then you have the XLE Premium, the XSE, which is what I'm driving today. And finally, the Limited. Now, if you're talking about plug-in hybrids, then you have the Prime, which is the Prime SE and the Prime XSE. So they're a little bit different because they're plug-in hybrids. And there's a plethora of non-hybrid trim levels. I'm gonna cover them in a separate video. So to conclude, I think the RAV4 is a really good compact SUV. And anyone that's shopping for a compact SUV definitely should go look at one and test drive one for themselves. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys later.